a beautiful song, Revelation song. Hallelujah. God's so good, isn't he, today? Praise the Lord, everyone. Here together again on a Sunday afternoon slash evening. Come together to look into the Word of God again and uh, just give God the glory. Amen. To get closer to Him through His Word. And when this whole thing is said and done, this whole world's done and over with, it's time to stand in judgment. We can stand in righteous judgment. Amen. Because we were obedient. We understood, we read, we studied the Word of God, we prayed, and we gave God the glory. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, everybody. Again, here together on Sunday afternoon. Going to go into the Word of God here. Going to look at some more scripture. Kind of following right down the path of what we did from last Sunday to midweek and now again to Sunday we're going to go into the Word of God. The Word of God being what? Our road map. Amen. This is our road map to the kingdom. Following the scriptures. Doing what the Word says. Applying this Word to our lives. And following the direction of the Word of God. Will take us into His presence. Amen. One day it's all going to be over. And we've got to spend eternity somewhere. Heaven or hell. And I hope and pray that it's in heaven. Amen with you. Heavenly Father, we just come before you in prayer right now, God, asking and praying. Bless this word, Lord. Hide it deep in fertile soil in our hearts, Lord, so it will grow and flourish and produce the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, God. Showing us, making us aware of your will and your desire for our lives. And Lord, we're going to be careful today to give you all the glory, the honor, the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. All right. We're going to go in, uh, to the Word of God. We're going to look at our road map again today. And we're going to actually come from two different places in Scripture, but Scripture nonetheless. We're, we're, we're going to talk about a little bit about being committed to the kingdom. Committed to the kingdom of God. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> if we're not committed to God's kingdom and to His Word and how He says to do what we need to do, we're not going to make it, amen, because we're not committed to what we do. And this is like that in life. If you're not committed to doing the best job you can do at work, you're not going to keep your job, amen. If you're not committed to be the best you can be at what you do, it's not going to pay off. It's not going to work for you. And again, how much more should we be committed to the things of God, amen, to get us to heaven and to eternity? All that we know how to do on this earth, and uh, be obedient to and we do we are obedient to these things amen we attempt to do what the word of god says to do hallelujah we'll be committed just like we are at our jobs i know a lot of people out there they're committed to what they do and they are excellent i know some people that are very very good at what they do amen and their their job security is good their money is good and everything they around their life is good because of their commitment to excellence and their commitment to doing what the what their uh, their job description tells them to do. Amen. How much more so again should we be committed to the things of God if we want to make it to heaven? Amen. So we're going to look at a little bit about commitment to the kingdom of God. We're going to look at a couple of portions of scripture that are very very important here. Okay. The first being the book of Galatians. Amen. Chapter six. We're going to go to Galatians chapter six. Okay. And we're going to look at verses 7 through 10. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 10. Okay? And the scripture reads like this. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. In verse 9, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. In verse 10, As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Amen. <clears throat> Very serious scripture there about how we should act and how we should do and be. To make us cause us to be committed to the kingdom okay we see here first of all don't be deceived don't fool yourself don't trick yourselves we don't fool ourselves 
We don't fall for lies from the devil, okay? God is not mocked, okay? If you mock God, you make fun of the things of God, you 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 disdain God, okay? It's not going to be a good thing. Don't be deceived. It says, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So whatever you put in the ground, whatever you plant, whatever you let come out of your mouth about the kingdom of God and how what do you think about God and the things of God is what's going to take place in your life. Amen? You can't plant thistles or thorns or poison ivy and expect grapes to grow. Amen? Or expect fruit to grow or vegetables to grow. What you plant's coming up. If you plant garbage, you're going to get garbage, okay? If you plant weeds and thistles and things that of no use at all, that's what's going to grow, okay? If you plant good things in your garden, your corn, your vines, your, your grapes, your, your fruit, your vegetables, that's what you're going to get, amen? Put corn in the ground, a kernel of corn, you'll get a stock of corn, all right? Put a seed for thorns and a, a whole bush of brambles will come up, and that's what you'll get, okay? God's saying here, don't be deceived, don't fool yourself, don't be mocked. God's not mocked. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap, okay? So whatever comes out of you, whatever you do, however you live your life, however you treat other people, that's what's going to come back to you, okay? And what we're going to call this here today, what the scriptures call it, is the kingdom mentality, okay? We have to be committed to the kingdom, and to be committed, we must have a kingdom mentality mentality amen we see here god's not uh, we're not to deceive ourselves fool ourselves god's not mocked for whatsoever man soweth that shall he reap verse 8 he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption so if you're all about your flesh taking care of yourself pleasing yourself pleasing the beggarly elements of your life of sin iniquity fornication Rev revelings, these type of things. If that's what you're into and that's what you do and you live your life to please your flesh and please your base senses, that's what you'll reap. Amen. And what is the reaping of that? What did it just say? It's he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Okay? But he that soweth to the Spirit, capital S, the Holy Spirit, shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So if you make the things that come out of your mouth and that you do in your life to bless other people and to do what the Word of God says to do and treat others how the Word of God says to treat others and to honor God and to glorify God like the Scriptures tell us to, then you will reap what? What did we say you'll reap there? Life everlasting? How about that? That's eternal life. That's eternal salvation. That's with God for eternity. Very important Scriptures here helping us <clears throat> form our mental picture or our mentality or our attitude where does it lie okay we talked about this uh midweek and last sunday the same kind of principle rolling on the same continuity here god's given us all right verse nine and let us not be weary in well doing don't get tired of doing good and i know we've talked about this before and believe me we'll talk about this again because this is a very central theme and issue to the kingdom mentality okay don't get tired of doing good be not weary in well doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not going back to planting you plant corn okay or you plant whatever you want to plant in the ground you don't go out the next day and it's full grown and it's ready to get is it what you begin to see after a little while is a little sprout come up and then this little sprout begins to grow and grow and grow and it after a certain amount of time in due season, when it's time for it to be full grown, it'll be there and you'll reap a harvest, right? One little kernel of corn that you put in the ground is eventually going to grow into a stalk with eight or ten good ears of corn on it. And each one of those ears, how many, how many kernels of corn is on an ear, right? A lot. So one little kernel grows into a bunch of corn, amen? So you see, but you have to be patient. It's not going to grow overnight. It's not going to be there the next day. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you don't faint. If you don't get tired of doing good, now I ain't seeing nothing here going on. I'm not seeing no good come from any of this. <clears throat> I'm good to other people. I try to do right and I try to do good, and I'm not seeing anything come back. But that's because there's a time for it. Timing. God's timing, okay? God has a timing. Sometimes you'll see it quick. Sometimes you may not. But when it comes, it is going to be well worth the wait. 
Believe me when I tell you. I've seen it both ways. I've seen things come back quickly, and I've seen things take their time to come back, but when they came back, they were well worth waiting on. Amen. I was blessed, and it was just, it was amazing, okay? This is what he's trying to tell us. This is the kingdom mentality, okay? This is the mentality we must have. We must maintain and understand, okay? That we don't get tired of doing good because we know even if even if for some reason we never saw a good thing on this earth, all this is going to bring us to the kingdom of God. And when you lay down your head for the last time, you leave this world, you die, you're going to go into rest, and then you're going to go into judgment, and you're going to have to spend eternity somewhere. And if nothing else, all that you did in this life, if you did it right after you were saved, and you lived for God and did what the Word said, and you made your mentality a kingdom mentality, okay? Then what you're going to reap in the end is life everlasting in the kingdom of heaven. You will be in paradise for eternity as opposed to the lake of fire and torment for eternity. So at the very least, if you got to wait to, to the kingdom comes, you'll be in a good place. And that alone is worth it. But I'm telling you, God blesses in this life as well. I've seen it. I know. I know he does. Okay? So if we don't get tired of doing good, and we just remember God's going to bless. It's going to happen. If it doesn't happen on this in this life, it'll happen in the next that's a good thing. Amen? Okay, verse 10. As we have, therefore, watch this. This is the crux of the matter. This is the kingdom mentality in a nutshell. As we, verse 10, Galatians 6 and 10. As we have, therefore, opportunity, let us do good unto all men. Not some men. Not the ones that just treat us good. Not the ones we like and the ones we don't like. We don't have to. Unto all men. Especially. Now, here we go especially unto them who are of the household of faith, other believers, amen? Especially other believers, your brothers and sisters of Christ. You're supposed to love everybody and treat everybody as good as you can. Remember we talked about as last before, as much as it be possible, as much as life in you, to do good to others, but there's just some people that just won't have it and they won't do right. But under the ones that can and will, you treat them good, especially those of the household of faith. Now, I know and understand, especially in these last days, that a lot of times your worst, your worst resistance and you get treated worse by some of those that are supposedly the household of faith. But listen to me. If they're not living and doing what the scriptures say, they're not truly of the household of faith. They may go to church, but that doesn't mean anything. If I come seeing you standing out in a coop, that doesn't make you a chicken, does it? Because you're standing in a chicken coop. If you're in a garage, that doesn't make you a car, does it? No. If you're being, being in church doesn't make you a Christian, being in a building. Your attitude, your lifestyle, your mentality is what makes you a Christian. Amen? And that's what we have to go by. And you're going to run into all kinds in this world, but the Bible tells us to try to do good to all men, especially those of the household of faith, okay? Especially those who love God and are of like precious faith. Amen? We have to see what he's saying here to develop our kingdom mentality. To be committed to the kingdom, we must have a kingdom mentality. Amen. And we see here in this portion of Galatians, chapter 6, verses 7 through 10, the developing of and the maintaining of the kingdom mentality and what it's all about, okay? Understanding we don't mock God, we don't, we don't do things to people that we don't want done unto us, right? The golden rule. The golden rule actually comes from Scripture. Okay, Jesus told us to treat others like we wanted to be treated. Amen. That's what we're supposed to do. And if everybody did that, we wouldn't have any problems in the world, would we? If everybody was on the same page and we were all doing what the Word said, you wouldn't have crime. You wouldn't have killings. You wouldn't have all the garbage that's going on. Oh, it's God's fault. It's not God's fault. It's our fault. He gave us a way to all get on the same page. And if we will, He'll bless it. Amen. And we will be saved, and good things can happen. Okay? Let's go to um, the book of Philippians now. This is a very important portion of Scripture, okay? We're going to Philippians chapter 2. We're going to look at verses uh, 1 through 5. Okay, and I'll explain this to you in a minute here. Once we get to this place. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Amen. And it reads thus, If there be therefore 
any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of the love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, watch this, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, see, having the same love, being of one accord and one mind, talking about kingdom and tally again, okay, verse 3, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves, there it is again, that theme that seems to run through the New Testament, preferring others over yourself, okay? Let this mind, let's see, oops, did I skip one? Okay, yeah, sorry about that. Verse 3, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Verse 4, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Now here's verse 5, and this is, is the summing up of the first previous verses we just read here. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. There is the mind of Christ or the kingdom mentality. He is the kingdom, isn't he? So his thought process and how he sees things is the kingdom mentality. To be committed to the kingdom and to have the kingdom mentality, we must have the mind of Christ. And these first preceding four verses are and are showing us what the mind of Christ were, okay? Verse 1, If there therefore be any consolation in Christ, if there's anything good you can find and hold on to, okay? If any comfort or love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded. How about having the same mindset, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. We have to all, people, we have to all be on the same page, okay? This is what it's about, being of one mind and being in one accord, coming together in the unity of the faith, amen? The bonds of peace, hallelujah, serving God together in the same way. That's why the scripture is so very clear. There are not supposed to be all these different doctrines of suppo doctrines, excuse me, a supposed Christianity out there. There's only supposed to be one. We're all supposed to be on the same page. Okay, and the reason we're not is the devil has got involved to make sure that people are not going to make it to heaven. There are going to be a lot of people that don't follow the word of God, do not do what the word of God says, because they didn't read it a lot of them for themselves. They didn't even bother to look and see if what they were being preached to was truth. Okay, they okay sounds good to me, and they went with it. Okay, they have the same Bible, they have the same word to look at, the same spirit of God that will bless them if they'll allow him to live inside them to bring them to the fullness and knowledge of truth, amen? That we can hold on to and see and understand what he's saying. If we will do this, okay? So there's going to be a whole bunch out there. We're not supposed to be that way. We're all supposed to be on the same page, doing the same thing, treating each other the same way, amen? Very important that we know this and see this and understand this, okay? He said in verse 3 again, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. Don't do it out of an argument. Well, I got to do this or I won't go to heaven. That's the wrong spirit and the wrong attitude. Or I'm doing this because people are going to look at me and think I'm wonderful and great. That's the vainglory, okay? If you're trying to go to church and live for God and be a preacher or a deacon or a saint or whatever to get some, some fame and some accolades so people will think you're somebody, that's going to be your reward. And that is all you're going to get. The scriptures tell us don't do not. Do not do that. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. We don't do it for that reason. But in lowliness of mind, in humbleness, in other words, meekness, let each esteem others better than themselves. Oh, you care about yourself? Yeah, but you care about your brother anymore, your neighbor, everybody around you even more. It's your, your concern for them. You want to make sure they're doing good. You want to make sure they have food. You want to make sure they have the things they need. Amen? That's what the mentality is. That's the mind of Christ, okay, as we're coming down. And we see this in the scripture. We don't do anything and none of these for any other reason. But out of humility and about meekness and have the same mindset and to esteem and care for others better than we do ourselves or more than we do ourselves. Amen. Verse 4, look not every man on his own things. 
Oh, I got mine. As long as I got mine, I ain't worried about nobody else. I don't care about anybody else. Wrong, wrong, wrong answer. That is flesh mindset, okay? That is like we talked about before. That is a spiritually immature attitude and mentality. That is not the kingdom mentality. That is the self mentality and the devil's mentality. That's the mentality the devil had and what got him kicked out of heaven in the first place. He tried to exalt himself above God. He thought it was all about him. He was made so beautiful. If you read the description of him, he was the most beautiful angel in heaven. And he let it go to his head and thought he was all that. And look what it got him. Kicked out. And this will get us the same thing if we have the same attitude, we will not go into heaven, but we will be in hell with him. And I don't want to be there, do you? I want to be with God in heaven. I want to have the right spirit and mentality toward other people. I want to live in harmony and peace as much as it is possible to do so. Amen. Okay. But we look to others and do this, okay? And here, verse 5 again. Let this mind be in you. Where was this mind at? Where did they find where does this mindset come from? Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. This is how the Lord thought. This is how he looked at things. And you think about his example of life. When he came, God manifested in the flesh, the Son of God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, washed his disciples' feet. He spent his entire three and a half years as an adult in his ministry serving and, and catering and ministering to others. Amen? Not to himself. He wasn't staying in palaces and being fed the best foods and living great and wonderful and having people come and bring him and do for him. What little good things happened to him is because people wanted to. He was a complete minister, a complete servant. And he told his disciples as much. You have to be servants. Amen? You look at Jesus as an example and his apostles. When his apostles were coming up, they were spiritually immature. They would say and do things, and he would constantly have to correct them and say, no, that's not the right attitude. They came back one day, Lord, we cast out devils. Devils are subject to us. They have to do what we say. And once he said, don't rejoice in the fact that the demons are subject to you, that you got power over them, but rejoice in the fact that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You see, his mentality was put, make the main thing the main thing, and the main thing here was you're saved. And that's what's important. When you're doing the things that you're supposed to be doing, this is, a, this is, this is the, the example that you're setting to others, and this is the road map you're following to make it into heaven. Amen? I'm, a, oh, I'm this, I'm that. I got this and that. It's not what you got. It's not about you. It's about your brother. My brother needs this. He's got that. Oh, you know, my friend just had this happen. Are you happy for somebody when they get something good, or do you get jealous and bothered? Well, Man, they don't deserve that. I should have that. You gauge yourself. We check ourselves every day we can by how we react to different situations and see whether our mentality is of the kingdom and like Christ's or it's of the world and like the devil's. Amen? We have to check ourselves. We have to look. We have to understand. We have to constantly evaluate where we're at. Okay? To make sure, because that devil's there all the time trying to hit you with thoughts and lead you off the path, okay? And a narrow path it is. The scriptures tell us that, amen? They're very clear about Herod and how narrow that path is, all right? We talked about before, spiritual infancy, okay? When you're a spiritual infant or a baby, it's all about you. Bless me, God, I need this, I need that, da, 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 da. It's all about you. As you mature and become a mature Christian and you're spiritual, spiritually mature, it becomes about others. Lord, help so-and-so. Help this one. Help that one, Lord. Bless this one, that one, Lord. That is the beginning of spiritual maturity. That is the development of the mind of Christ or the kingdom mentality. Amen? And that's how we have to live. That's how we have to be, brothers and sisters. We have to have that mentality. And if you have that mentality and focus on those things and move that direction, it will literally change you, literally inside. It will change your thought process. It will change your spirit and mold you into the image of Christ. Amen. And you'll begin to act like Christ. You'll be able to do the, begin to do the things that the Lord did. And you'll act like that. You'll have the right spirit and the right mentality. Amen. And then when you stand in judgment, you'll hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into your rest because you allowed the Spirit of God to mold you and mold your mindset. The mindset is so very important in this 
life that we live now in the flesh, okay? That our mindset not be carnal, but be spiritual, amen? That we allow the Holy Spirit to mold our mindset to care about others as much as or even more than, like the Scripture says, than our own selves. It's not just about us. It's about making sure that our brothers and sisters and people around us, you see somebody... Well, that person, I'm not going to give them nothing. That they're, they're probably just going to buy drugs or alcohol with it. But you know what? If they're in need and it looks like they're in need, it doesn't matter what they do with it. What matters is why you gave it to them. It could be a possibility that they're telling the truth and don't have anything and need that money to live. Okay? It's not for you to judge. It's just for you to have such compassion and be like Christ. What would Christ do for them if he walked by them? You know what he would do. He'd grab them by the hand, heal them, and raise them up if they were sick. But he would give them what they needed. Okay? He would provide for their needs. And we do the same. We have to be like Christ. That means I have to give to everybody. Feel after the Spirit. Okay? But don't be bitter. Don't be hard. That's not how... It's, we're not to judge. If somebody looks like they're in need or if they're out there and they say they have a need and you're able to help meet that need, the Bible tells us to do that. The Bible tells us to entertain strangers. For in doing so, some of us have entertained angels, the Bible says, unaware. What if God sent an angel there looking like that, dressed like that, to test your spirit? And, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Test our spirits to see what kind of person we are. So, he sent an angel to stand there in them raggedy clothes. Well, if God was going to send an angel, they wouldn't look like that. Why wouldn't they? That's how you test you, how you really are. They wouldn't send them out there in nice, wonderful church clothes, acting like a saint. If he wanted to really see how much you cared about others, that's exactly how he would do it. Amen? And the Bible tells us that sometimes the Lord will send angels to test us and see how our hearts are, how our spirits are toward others. Amen? Then again, that is the kingdom mentality, isn't it, really? That I don't question what I see. If I have it to help, I give. Because that is what God said to do. If I get blessed for it, that's great and fine. But the whole mentality is they need it. If they're there and I'm able to meet that need, then I try to help as much as I can. Okay. My goal is to heal. He, my goal is to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. That's what I want to hear. I want to be in heaven one day when this is all over. I've done been through things and done things and had things happen. Yes, 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 yes. I want to be in heaven. Lord, give me another opportunity. I'm not blowing this one. I'm going to care about my fellow man. I want to treat people right. I want to look at them through spiritual eyes and not carnal eyes. When I look on somebody, I want to see what God sees, okay? If we see what God sees, we've got a much better chance of not lusting and desiring, not wanting things we shouldn't want of the base and animal attitude that the devil tries to appeal to, but that spiritual nature that God wants to produce and grow in us so that we're like him. Amen? That's what's so very, very, very important in this day and hour, that we're like God. Our examples are Jesus and his apostles and how they did and what they did, okay? And we have that where? In the Word, right? It's in the Bible. We can read the book of Acts and see exactly how his apostles acted we read the Gospels, we see what Jesus said to do. Then we go to the book of Acts, we see where the people did exactly what Jesus told them to do. And then we see the, read the letters or the epistles written to the church that directs new saints and old saints alike on how to do, reminding them how to act and be and do. Amen. Bringing to their remembrance these very things that will take us into the kingdom. Because after all, that's really what it's all about for us believers, right? We want to be saved. And even some of you out there that might not be believers that God might be dealing with, if you say, yes, Lord, I want to know more about you, I'm going to, I'm going to answer the call, Lord, this is where you're headed, into the Word of God, to have the kingdom mentality, to be committed to the kingdom, and to do the things that God has ordained for us to do as the church, as the body of Christ, in His Word. Amen so very important and when you start living this and doing it like it says it's very easy it becomes easy when it's not about you anymore about your selfishness when you get your eyes off the things of this life and the things of the flesh and begin to look ahead at the spiritual things and realize i need to focus on what's coming not what's here but what's coming okay remember what the end game is that's eternity in either heaven or hell amen that is what's so very very important spiritual maturity growing amen like we talked about before following what the word of god being our roadmap leading us 
to the kingdom. Remember the scripture says it's a narrow path that leads to heaven. If you be there to find it. And the only way to get there is follow the word of God. It is the road map that leads us through that narrow path into the kingdom of God. Amen. Remember what else the scripture says. Broad is the path and wide is the gate that leads to destruction. Many will go in there. That's an eight lane highway to hell. It's real easy to find that. Real easy to get on that. And real easy to speed yourself right into a devil's hell. Amen. I don't want to go there today or tomorrow or the next day. And I don't want you to go there either. I want us all to be in heaven together glorifying God for eternity in paradise. Amen. If you believe in God, you've got to believe these things. If you believe in God, you must believe in His Word. And you must do His Word. You must live in His Word. Amen. And this is what His Word tells us today. We've gone again into the Word, Galatians and Philippians, and saw some wonderful things, found some more wonderful golden nuggets buried in the Word of God to lead us and guide us and help us through this life. Amen. Lord bless you all. I appreciate you. Again, if you ever got any questions, get a hold of me. You, you want to challenge, you think you know something different, I always, I'm always i out there, you can show it to me something different in the Word, I'll look, I'll listen. If you can prove it, like I can prove what I read 